water. We drink it, bathe in it, use it to cool us down and warm us up. The California drought has impacted the way we think about water. Gone are the days when no one really noticed water flowing down the street from a sprinkler system or when we routinely left the water running while brushing our teeth or doing the dishes. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth Garrison and on this edition of Inside Kern, we're going to see how the county has stepped up to the challenge of the California drought. For years, they have been retrofitting plumbing fixtures, designing and installing low water use landscaping, and now they're going to upgrade their large air conditioning systems to more efficiently use water and electricity. So, stay with us for the next 30 minutes as we learn how the county is conserving water. Because as we all know, Every drop counts. With more than 3.8 million square feet of occupied space, the County of Kern is a big place. More than 250 facilities are under the maintenance purview for the General Services Division for the County of Kern. Joining me now is Brett Haney. He's a Division Director for General Services. Brett has been instrumental in helping to identify areas of water use. After careful planning, his staff has been retrofitting fixtures for months now. Brett, when and why did the County of Kern start assessing water use? Well, the county does millions of dollars of projects every year, what we call major maintenance projects. As part of those projects, we typically find increased savings in conservation just through the nature of upgrading old equipment to new. In 2013, though, we really started looking at smaller projects that would make a big impact and so we feel that as stewards of the resources, we need to be just as mindful of it as we ask our citizens to be. Would you say the county's been reactive or proactive to the California drought? I'd say we've been very proactive. The projects that we do every year through our construction and maintenance divisions have been focused on conservation of all types, electricity, gas, water. But really since 2013, we've focused on water, which is before the state mandated the cutbacks that we were recently experienced. You bet. What kinds of projects have you completed at the county and do you think that it's made a difference? What we've been focusing on recently is bathroom fixtures. We've, we've replaced uh, urinal flush valves, we've replaced sink faucets, and we knew that the uses of those products or those fixtures weren't going to go down, so we had to find a way to use less water while they're being used. Uh, because it's still fairly recent, we haven't had any hard data to show what our numbers are going to be, but I'm confident in saying that we're going to save millions of gallons of water every year. How did you decide where to begin? We decided to start our largest facilities first. We started our public health building, we moved on to our public services building, the Beale Library, and here at the County Administrative Center. We really knew that by tackling the biggest buildings, we would get the biggest bang. Um, in these four facilities alone, we replaced over 180 fixtures, and that is about 30% of the total fixtures that we expect to replace this fiscal year. So will the county be branching out to smaller facilities? Yes, we've already started to do that, and this is phase one of probably a two or three phase approach where we'll address these particular fixture replacements. Now, fixture replacements, is that something residents can do to play their part in this California drought conservation? 
Yes, uh, you know, some of the things that we're doing are very simple that you can do around your home. You can certainly replace any of your sink faucets with a lower gallon per minute uh, flow rate. Um, low flow toilets and things like that um, are certainly things that residents can do to do their part. Brewer is the General Services Facilities Manager, so as you can imagine, he has his hands full. For months now, Carl and his staff have been retrofitting faucets and toilets, hundreds of them. Trust me, that's no small feat. Carl, describe to me the kinds of retrofits your staff has been doing and the expected savings. So General Services has really been focused on restroom water efficiency. Um, we've replaced the urinal flush valves, the censored faucets, as well as uh, upgraded to low flow uh, toilet flush valves. So the county can expect to save about six to nine million gallons per year. So were the upgrades expensive and do you believe they were worth the time and the money? So ROI was not the only thing that the county considered when making these improvements. Uh, with water being such a valuable resource, we explored multiple options and tried to make sure that we fit not only our long-term efficiency needs, but our maintenance goals as well. So with that being said, the county can expect to recoup the money spent in about five years. So, are there more facility retrofits or upgrades in the works? And if so, what is the county's timeline? Yeah, we definitely are gonna continue to improve all of our facilities and make them more efficient uh, when it comes to water and energy. Um, some of the things we're going to be doing in the future is upgrading our shower heads as well as looking into cooling tower efficiencies. I don't think there will ever be a time where the county's not focused on water efficiency, energy efficiency. It's just part of who we are now. You've been focused on water for months. What would you say are some things that residents can do at home? So I think the best information for the homeowner is to keep it simple. Um, focus on the small things like making sure that your dishwasher is fully loaded before you start it, um, turning off the water as you brush your teeth, as well as maybe making sure that your lawn is set for the appropriate settings for your sprinklers. Um, it doesn't have to be overwhelming and if we all do our small part, it can have a huge impact. So, as you can see, the county has been and will continue to play their part when it comes to conserving water in facilities. One of their greatest challenges, however, are large building air conditioning systems. They use a lot of water. We will see how the county intends to address that issue coming up next. In addition to fixture retrofits, the county is looking into their air conditioning systems as well, also big consumers of water. Joining me is Jeff Hill. He is the General Services Division Director over construction. He and his staff are tackling this issue head on. So Jeff, how many buildings have cooling towers as part of their air conditioning system? The county has currently seven facilities and buildings that utilize cooling towers as part of their HVAC system along with uh, other um, with other equipment um, uh, air handlers and chillers now now this technology is the most effective in large facilities right this technology is very effective in large facilities um, they are able to produce uh, large quantities of cold water that in turn, cools the air that uh, conditions the space um, uh, in these large facilities and large buildings within the county. Now what process are you utilizing to identify ways to save water in these cooling towers? The county has discussed uh, and been in contact with and toured facilities 
in, um, uh, in neighboring jurisdictions, San Diego County as well as Los Angeles Public Works Department. We've uh, contacted their procurement staff as well as their engineering staff and have toured the facilities to look at the technology that they're using to reduce water consumption via uh, innovative tr water treatment systems um, within, their, within their facilities. Now your priority is construction services and yet a retrofit or an upgrade sort of seems like a maintenance project. Why does it fall under construction services? The projects to replace uh, or retrofit and or uh, construct new cooling tower systems typically run in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, General Services has, uh, has the responsibility to, to maintain and to construct uh, new facilities within the county. Maintenance, the maintenance division typically is responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance and operations. Construction Services has the architects, the engineers, and the procurement staff necessary to meet the public contract code for, uh, for public works projects, um, as well as uh, provide the permitting and the architecture and engineering. Now because this is a brand new program, sort of a pilot program if you will, where are you in the planning and development stage? We, um, the county has budgeted in previous years money for water conservation. Uh, we are currently budgeting for this next fiscal year as well as anticipate budgeting for, uh, for the foreseeable future in additional, uh, additional fiscal years for water conservation efforts. We currently have, General Services has a request for information out to the, uh, uh, to the mechanical engineering community to provide us information uh, on innovative ways to reduce water consumption via uh, innovative water treatment systems for the cooling towers. We expect the responses for those proposals soon and we will use that as a basis for, uh, for specification and design in future projects. So do you feel, from a government agency perspective, that the county has taken a leadership role? The county has taken a leadership role. Um, we, uh, we understand that water is a precious resource. It, it, uh, it's not only um, a, a reduction in cost, but it's a reduction of a, pr of a precious resource that can be uh, better used um, for domestic purposes rather than throwing it down the drain. Domingo is a supervising engineer for the General Services Division. Let's listen to how he describes how the cooling towers work and how they are approaching the necessary modifications for the project. Kim, describe how cooling towers work and how do they use water? So, a uh, cooling tower is part of the chilled water system in a heating, ventilation, air conditioning system sometimes known as HVAC or HVAC. Uh, and what it does is it takes the chilled water that is heated by air that's provided to the building spaces, and then it is taken to the top of the tower, and then the water uh, trickles down and expels heat. And by expelling heat, it evaporates. And so uh, over time, the water in the, in the cooling tower starts to accumulate minerals and, and also chemicals are added to make sure that uh, the equipment doesn't uh, form scale like in, like in your pool. Mm -hmm. And so over time, these minerals start building up in this cooling tower and the water then is, is, starts becoming more hot. So is the goal of the project or the goal of the modifications to decrease the number of times the system needs to be flushed of water? Well, you mentioned flushing the system, and that is, that is a good point. One of, the, one of the problems with using a cooling tower system is that over time the water does get hard. I mean, it's so hard that it can damage the equipment. So part of the, the, the strategy of dealing with the hardness is to add some chemical to it. And then on top of that, over time, it starts to concentrate. And then it gets so hard that it needs to be flushed in the system. So water does get flushed in the system periodically, and then it is made up with uh, the drinking water that we use. So can the water that you flush from the system, can it be reused? Can we save that water? 
Well, because it's hard and it has the chemicals in it, um, it's usually not a good candidate for reuse. And so it's usually just sent through the, through the sewer system. So our HVAC systems with cooling towers uh, commonplace with, within large uh, buildings such as the county administrative building? Yeah, in large buildings like this, water is a really efficient uh, carrier of heat and so and, and stays cold. So you usually don't see them on smaller buildings, but in large facilities like what the county has. That's uh, a more common uh, use of cooling uh, towers. So how much less water with the modifications you plan on making do you hope to use? So the county's been looking at several different options, uh, treatment systems, other schemes on how to deal with the hard water and the, and the chilled water to try to reduce its water use in the, in the cooling towers. And some of them can claim to reduce the water use up to 50%. Wow, that's a lot. So any idea on what the cooling tower modifications will cost? You know, uh, relative to the amount of water that's being used uh, and the water, uh, the cost of the water that's being used, um, actually pretty, pretty relatively small. You know, usually for say for a cooling tower the size of that, that operates this building, usually somewhere in the fifty to hundred thousand dollar range with probably a, uh, a payback period of maybe five to ten years. So, in essence, you believe that the time, the energy, the effort spent on these modifications will be worth it. Well, I mean, when you have a payback period, you know, less than 10 years, it's usually it's usually a good thing to do. So, uh, yeah, the county is seriously looking at it. So, I bet you never thought about how the county cools large buildings like the county administration building. Well, now you know. And now you know that the county is working hard to make those systems more effective and efficient. Up next, we're going to pay a visit to a park that uses hardly any water for its landscaping and still looks beautiful. Stay with us. Welcome to Petroglyph Park, a new and relatively unknown county park in Ridgecrest, California. Nadia Lopez is the construction services designer behind Petroglyph Park. She's here today to give us the inside scoop. So Nadia, how was Petroglyph Park conceived? Well, from the very beginning, Mary Beth, it was a, it was a, it was a group effort, and the group included the district supervisor, uh, the public, the local water district, and also general services. Um, we had a couple meetings um, to brainstorm of how we can we could develop the plus or minus uh, 12 acres of land. And um, along that, a lot of uh, the zero escape uh, philosophy was being brought to the table. We took that, that mm -hmm. principle and we, we ran with it. Perfect. Now, what can people expect to see when they visit the park? You can expect to see a lot of native planting uh, that are appropriate for the climate zone. Um, you will see, you won't just see gray and brown. You'll see interesting, like structurally interesting and colorful plants. Um, like the uh, ground cover, for example, that's called a uh, Maysville Daisy. It's bright yellow. Um, we also have uh, some plants called kangaroo paws. Very, um, they can get up to five feet tall. Nice structure, nice structural uh, look to them. And also you'll see native art that's, look, that's regional. And when you say that, native art, they're big. They're, they're, they're taller than I am. Yes. We felt it was crucial to fully embrace the local uh, Native American artwork and bring it to the park. Now there's a lot of talk about xeroscaping. Uh, what exactly is xeroscaping? Is it all browns? No, it's quite the opposite. Once you uh, really research it, uh -huh. um, it, to me, it's like a canopy, almost, of layers that you can, that you can uh, put together. Uh, but as a principle, is, uh, a principle of xeriscaping is uh, incorporating native or climate zone uh, plants that would do well with only the water that's provided by, by nature. And by the time that they're established, there will be really no uh, need for supplemental water, which water right now is a very precious resource. You bet. Now, how can residents incorporate that same 
Zeroscape philosophy at home? I think I would recommend starting with uh, the local water district. They've done a lot of the homework. They have uh, good resources where they, they can direct you on uh, what climate zone you live in and, and also give you some ideas of what kind of plants would work there. In addition to the Zeroscaping landscaping, what what the park has done a beautiful job with petroglyphs and pictograms. Where did the designs come from for these works of art? It was again a group effort with local artists. Olaf Dowd was the artist that created the pictograms, um, the petroglyphs, and also the alignments. Petroglyph Park contains not only some great drought-tolerant plantings, but it also has some of the most amazing artistic representations of pictograms and petroglyphs. But the park didn't happen overnight. It took years of thinking and rethinking to get to the park that we have today. Joining me is Jeff Hill. He has a little history on the subject. Hi, Jeff. So, give me a little history on the park. The park did not originally uh, begin or was conceived as what you see today. It was originally conceived as a more conventional park with less focus on drought tolerant plants and uh, certainly without, uh, without the cultural asset of the petroglyphs and pictograms. Um, through community involvement and discussions with the local water agency as well as leadership of the first district supervisor. Uh, the project changed shape from a conventional park to what you see today. Landscaping is truly one of the most consumptive parts of our water use as, as both residents and probably at the county. What other things is the county of Kern doing to decrease its reliance on water? The county is looking at water reduction efforts uh, externally to buildings as well as internally to buildings. Uh, externally, uh, we are focusing on uh, the idea of xeriscaping, which is um, planting uh, low and no use um, uh, landscaping around facilities. Uh, internally, we are using low flow um, fixtures in all restrooms. Uh, we're retrofitting existing facilities for those low flow fixtures. Uh, we are also looking at reducing costs through major utility systems, for instance, the HVAC systems that use uh, cooling towers. Uh, we are looking at, the, uh, looking at ways to reduce the water consumption within those utility systems. So is water um, reduction and, and water conservation a part of your design criteria? It is a part of the design criteria. We, uh, recognizing the resource uh, is, is dwindling and that we are, we are in a drought, and prior to that, we have used, um, in our plans and specifications, low flow, uh, low consumption fixtures in all areas where it's appropriate. Uh, as well as um, uh, design criteria related to the HVAC systems that use water as well. As you can see, the county has taken a leadership role in the effort to conserve water. While there's a lot of talk of rain in our future, it will take some time for California to heal. So the efforts that we all make today will help sustain us for generations to come. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Inside Kern the show that tries to demystify county programs, services, and activities. We hope that you've learned something today and that you're able to incorporate it in your water conservation efforts at home. So, on behalf of myself, Mary Beth Garrison, and the entire KGov team, we wish you a very pleasant rest of your day, and we ask that you remember to conserve water. 
because every drop 